Do you know what's better than you talking about you? It's other people talking about you. Of course you're gonna say your product is great, but when other people say it's great, you know you're gonna make a sale. Hi, Rich Friend, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Vanessa and I help entrepreneurs like you overcome obstacles and find clarity to keep building. If you wanna book a clarity session with me, my calendar and details are down in the description box, but today, Today we're gonna be talking about launching. We're gonna be talking about the 3P launch framework. So grab yourself a cup of tea and a notepad and get ready to up your launch game. Because out here, we don't want crickets when we launch. We want those four figure, five figure, six figure launches. But before we get into it, please do me a quick favor and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out the channel and helps this video go out to more people like you so that I can keep creating free content that will help you get better with your business. The first P, positioning, is all about building authority. Why would someone buy from you? Think about it. What makes you buy from brands? You buy because you trust that what you're buying is authentic. You trust that it will solve the problem that you have or that it will meet the need that you have. If you thought something was fraudulent, you definitely would not buy what they're selling. So think about your customers when you're positioning yourself. Are you someone that they can trust? Are you someone that they will want to buy from? Becoming someone that your audience sees as a service provider takes positioning. And for you to be able to position yourself for a successful launch, you have to do these three things. One, you have to build authority. And by build authority, I don't necessarily mean be an expert. If you're not an expert in something, that's fine. You could position yourself as someone who's one step ahead of your audience. For example, you have people who've been married for just one year who are marriage coaches, right? They're coaches to people who are dating to get married. Even though they haven't been married for 30 years, they're just saying, hey, I'm on the other side of it. Let me teach you how. You could position yourself like that. And that's called the learn as I learn strategy. You could also position yourself as an expert if you are an expert. But the key is to show up consistently to your audience with valuable information about the same topic. So for example, if you want to be known as a marketing expert, then your Instagram feed can not only have girls trips and what you eat in a day. You want to make sure that whatever content you're creating is delivering value in the specific niche that you want to be known for. And you have to do it consistently. Don't don't show up today as a dating coach and then show up tomorrow as a marketer. Like you have to be focused and consistent. Another great way to build authority is by answering questions that your audience might have. You want to make sure you're the person they think of when they think of that problem. The next P is to prime your audience. And by prime, I mean butter them up, make them want you, give them a taste of who you are so that they want more. And how do you do that? By engaging. Think of priming like dating. Your audience is getting to know you and you're also getting to know them. In this stage, you want to be asking them what their pain points are. You can do this by putting up polls in your stories. Ask them what their challenges are around your niche. For example, if you're a business coach like I am, you could ask them what their biggest struggle has been in their first year of business. You'll be surprised how many people have different challenges that you've not even thought of yet. So it's always great to ask your audience questions so you don't go making a product or service that they don't even need. That's the good thing about being a small business. When you're a small business, you can connect with your customers and your audience on a personal level. And in addition to showing up, let them be a part of your creation process. Now let me spill the tea, girl. Don't tell anyone. You can just make them feel like they're a part of the process, even if they're really not. For example, if you've already decided what you're going to call your brand, you can just throw out some keywords that include the words that you've already decided you're going to put in your brand and ask them to choose what your brand should be called and they would feel so engaged and feel like they're a part of the process and they're committed to you and they want to see it work. This thing works like a charm. Everyone wants to hold their own creation. So if you make your business seem like something that you're co-creating with your audience, you have your magic formula. Now for the home run, persuasion. This comes after you've primed them, you've engaged with them, and now it's time to tie the knot. 
girl. At this point, you're gonna need to validate whatever it is you're saying you are. So yes, they know you, they like you, but do they trust you enough to give you their money? That's the question you're trying to answer at the persuasion stage. And there are three things you need to do at this point to make them give you their coins. One, you need to get beta users. And what I mean by beta users are people who you would first sell the product to at a very discounted rate or or give it to them for free. Let them try it out and let them give you testimonials in return. These are the things you're gonna put on your sales page, you're gonna put on your website, you're gonna put on your Facebook ads. All your marketing material would have testimonials that are real because you can't do fake testimonials, that's illegal. You need these beta testers so that you can have people who would validate your product because you know what's better than you talking about you? It's other people talking about you. Of course you're gonna say your product is great but when other people say it's great you know you're gonna make a sale now after getting beta testers and collecting testimonials the third part is to give your audience a test run you can do this in one of two ways one is through a workshop and two is through a discovery call I usually recommend workshops for mid ticket products or services and I recommend discovery calls for high ticket services if you're charging each person over two thousand dollars for a product or a service then it's worth it to hop on a call with the person and make them feel like they have a one-on-one -on -one connection with you. Listen, money is energetic. If you have a good personality and you get on a phone with someone and you listen to their problems, let them rent. You're a therapist for those 15 minutes. Let them tell you where it hurts and probe and dig into the point where they're like, I need help. And you're like, I will help you. This is a problem that can be solved. We can get you to the other side. That's how you make a sale, okay? But if it's a mid or a low ticket service, then it might take up too much time to get on phone calls with every single person. So what you're gonna wanna do is put up a workshop and at the end of the workshop, have a Q&A session. Now in that Q&A session, people can ask their questions, they can share their pain points with you and you can pitch your product or service. That way, when launch comes around, you would already have people who want you, you would already have people's emails, Emails, you would already have people's phone numbers and you would be good to go. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did then go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because I have a ton of content coming out that would help you build your business and scale it to five or six figures. If you haven't liked this video yet please like it and I would see you next time. Bye!